Hello, and welcome once again to Family Historian. My name is Stephen Conti. Was your ancestor a 49er? Did he take part in the 1849 California Gold Rush? Well, if he did, this is definitely the show to watch, because tonight's topic is finding your Gold Rush ancestor. And joining me on tonight's show, I am very honored to have as my guest a young man named John Dorval. Besides being a very fine historian, John has been panning for gold since the age of four. And on tonight's show, John is going to teach us how we can find our gold rush ancestor. And now let's go panning for ancestors with John Dorval. John, welcome to my show. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. John, I want to thank you right now for coming all the way down to New Jersey from your home in Port Jervis, New York. Thanks very much. Oh, you're welcome. And you know, John, when I first met you, you taught me so much about this gold rush era that I did not know about. So we're going to share that knowledge with our viewers right now. Now, we all hear about the California gold rush, 1848, 1849, the 49ers. But there were gold rushes before that time, long before. Can you share that with our viewers? Uh, yes. Um, in uh, 1799, gold was first discovered in North Carolina, and uh, which sparked a gold rush. But it, it didn't happen until 1803 because the gold that was found was used as a doorstop for three years. Mm -hmm. And then once it was realized what it was, um, the people that found it, they, they started a gold mine, which was the Reed Gold Mine, and uh, started in 1803, and, and it was active until 1912. And this is in North Carolina? North Carolina, right. yes. And this was on, you mentioned uh, the Cherokee Indians. This was their territory. Well, Georgia was their territory, and later gold was discovered in Georgia, 1828. And it was all on Indian uh, territory, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, that sparked, uh, with the, the Indians being on there, right. the Cherokees, yeah. they moved them off and they moved them out to Oklahoma, which later became known as the uh, Trail of Tears. Right, the Trail of Tears. Okay. Yes. And where in Georgia was this gold discovered? It was in uh, Lumpkin County near mm -hmm. Dahlonega is where it was first discovered. And... Uh, it, w it covered Lumpkin County, White County, Union County, and Cherokee County. Right. And that was the big place to go at, at that time. At that time, yes. See, I never knew there was yeah. a gold rush before the 1849 California, which is the most famous one, oh, of yeah. course. Right. Yeah. Now, um, you yourself have done some gold mining in that area. I did, yes. You did, okay. Now, the Trail of Tears... Um, these gold fields in Georgia, uh, in Dahlonega, are they still active now? Do people still go down there? Uh, people still go down there, but uh, a lot of the mines had closed up probably around World War II. They were mining there still around World War II. There was one croissant gold mine which was still commercially active until early 1980s, but right. it is open like a museum now right, right. where people can actually go and pan for gold and and Tora, the only working stamp mill in Georgia. Great. Now, there is a book that John uh, has uh, showed me, uh, The Georgia Gold Rush. And this is where the genealogy part comes in. Yes. I never knew there was a Georgia Gold Rush. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, 1828, 1829. Yes, 20, so 20, 20 years before the 1849 yes. Gold Rush. Now, here's the genealogy part because in here, will list names of the members or the miners, you called it? Yes, they were miners. And what they did was uh, the, the land that, was, that belonged to the Cherokees, mm -hmm. they had uh, you know, divided it and used a lottery system to divide it among the people. Right. And so in this book, we'll give a list of what you call the members. Is that right? Uh, they were members, miners, um, yes. And there was a lottery. There was a lottery, yes. Okay, and I think we have a list right here. I, I do have a list of some of the names. Yeah, can you, and, and we'll show you that list. If you can read that list, you might find an ancestor among this list. Yeah. This is the genealogy part of our show. 
and we have uh, these are the winners of of the lottery. Right. You know, it was divvied up mm -hmm. and uh, you know set off in squares. And uh, Arthur Turner is one that had won one of the land lotteries. And mm -hmm. Aaron Palmer, William A. Stewart, uh, George W. Bowen, mm -hmm. Ebenezer C. Hatcher. And uh, this, this land lottery took place in 1832. I see. Okay. So, so shortly uh, after. Yes. Right. And we do have a photo of our fine guest, uh, uh, John Dorval. When were you there in Georgia? Uh, I was there in 2010, and I was at a place called Loud Mine. And that's near Dahlonega. It is near Dahlonega, yes. Okay, and we have a picture of him with modern equipment, not the old-fashioned. Right, yeah. yes. And what, what is this equipment called? You that have some is, certain names yeah, for it. Yeah, that particular piece is called a high banker, and it runs, there's a motor and a pump mm -hmm. that circulates water through it, and you shovel your uh, gold material into it, and it washes down through a sluice box. Right. But the sluice box really hasn't changed much since, mm -hmm. you know, the days of the... California Gold Rush. Right. Were you successful? Oh, yes. I was successful. And uh, I do have gold from uh, Georgia. Did you find a good amount of gold? Uh, I was happy with it. Any amount of gold that I find, I'm always happy. You, you must know? be a rich guy by now. Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> not but, with gold. You know. Right. Right. Okay. So that we had that gold rush. And now we come to the California Gold Rush. 1848, 1849 is the beginning of it. Yes. And pardon the pun, this was the golden age yes. of prospecting. Yeah. And what years? You have some years here, 1849 to 1858 is when the major rush was on. And uh, that's when the great migration was happening from, you know, the eastern United States and other points in the world. And this is where we have that phrase, go west, young man. Yes. Okay, fine. Yes. Now... California, that's yeah. where the gold was discovered, was really Indian and Mexican territory at right. that it time. Right, it was Mexican territory. It was a northern province of Mexico. Right. And did the Mexicans and the Indians know of the existence of gold there? Well, the, yes, they did. The Indians certainly did because it was a couple centuries earlier. Mm -hmm. The Spaniards had uh, enslaved them to mine gold, and they were shipping gold back to Spain. Right, right. So now... Now the white man comes into that area. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, this, of, of course, includes the history of California. Yeah. Uh, because California was the northern territory of Mexico, as right. we know it today. Yes. And 1846 yeah. is a very important year. What happened in that year, John? Uh, the United States went to war with Mexico, and uh, that war lasted until 1848. Mm-hmm. And it ended with the Treaty of uh, Guadalupe Hidalgo, and Mexico ceded California as well as uh, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Utah, part of Texas, mm -hmm. and part of, part of Cal uh, Colorado. Okay, so this, this made it wide open for the gold rush. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, there were three men. You yes. taught me about these three men who were very instrumental with this gold rush and uh, tell us about the first one. I believe he was born in Switzerland of all places. Well, he was born to Swiss parents in uh, Baden. Okay. And, uh, but he came to the United States in his early 30s mm -hmm. and he made his way to California in the late 1830s. And his name is? Uh, John Sutter. John Sutter. Yes, John Sutter. And he founded Sutter's? Sutter's Fort, Sutter's Mill. He ended up going to, uh, he arrived at San Francisco Bay mm -hmm. in uh, 1840 with the intent of starting a colony. And so he went up to the Sacramento River and established a fort on the Sacramento River. And uh, he was building a grist mill and he needed lumber. So he built a sawmill up on the American River. I see. Now Sutter's Mill or Sutter's has another name, Sutter's Mill? It's Sutter's Mill, yes. And that is near present day? Uh, well, Sutter's Fort is right exactly where Sacramento is today. Right, the capital of, of California. Yeah. Okay, fine. Now, when he was there, he was a rather wealthy man then, wasn't he? He or? was very industrious, and, and yeah, you would, could say he was wealthy because uh, his main goal was having a colony and a ranch 
-hmm. and uh, he had a few other businesses going on there. And uh, so, uh, and, and that's why he was building the sawmill to, to right. provide lumber for his grist mill. Now, speaking of lumber, he did hire, this is, this is wonderful now, he did hire a man who was a carpenter. Yes. Uh, by the name of James Wilson Marshall. Yes. And this is really something. And tell us about James Wilson Marshall. Well, James Wilson Marshall, he was from Hopewell, New Jersey. That's where he was born. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a pioneer of California as well. And uh, he was contracted by Sutter to do his carpentry. Mm -hmm. And he was the one who was building the sawmill on the American River for the lumber for the grist mill. Right, right. And while he was doing that, um, you know, when they first started it up, they found that the tail race to the mill was too small. Mm -hmm. And it couldn't handle all the water that turned the wheel. So uh, Marshall, he had to widen the race, and so they shut the water off. And upon doing so, he discovers gold on the American right. River. So a New Jersey man from Hopewell, New Jersey, discovered gold in California. Yes. All right. And they do have a monument uh, to him. Yes. Uh, where he's pointing down at the very spot. The exact location where he found it, yes. All right. And so he told Sutter about this. Right. He went down. He took that gold and brought it down to uh, Sutter's attention mm -hmm. down at the fort and then... Later, him and Sutter rode back to the mill so Sutter could verify his finding. And mm -hmm. sure enough, there was more gold, and they went further up the American River and tested for gold there and found uh, an adequate amount of gold. And you told me that Sutter wasn't really that impressed with this. Yeah, he no really enthusiasm. didn't want the gold because the amount that he saw there, he knew that people were going to want it. Right. You know, so, and, and his thing was, now this gold discovery was made a week before the signing of the treaty, mm -hmm. the uh, Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Right, right. And uh, Sutter's concern was that all this land he had, you know, he didn't have grant and title from the United States government. Mm -hmm. And he was afraid he was not going to be able to keep it. So mm -hmm. that was his fear. I see. So he wanted to keep it a secret. You know, at least till he got his grist mill done and secured title to the land. But not for long. That didn't happen. Okay. So there were two workers th from the sawmill mm -hmm. who went down to a store by the, um, by the fort, which was owned by Samuel Brannan. Mm -hmm. And uh, they paid for materials that they needed, and they paid in gold. And Samuel Brannan wanted to know where this gold came from. Mm -hmm. So they told him. Well, he also, Samuel Brandon also had a store in San Francisco. That was his main store. And, uh, well, Samuel Brandon was a Mormon from, he was born in uh, Saco, Maine. Mm -hmm. And he had uh, gone out to California to establish a Mormon uh, colony there. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was also a businessman as well as... A very good businessman. Yes, very good businessman. He also had a newspaper. He started the first newspaper in San Francisco called the California Star. Well, he got this gold and he ran a story in his paper. It, you know, it ended up on the back page, small story, about the uh, discovery of gold on the American River. It didn't really get much attention. So the gold that uh, the workers used to buy goods in the store by the fort, mm -hmm. When he got a hold of that, he brought it right out in the street, held it up in the air and shouted, gold, gold, gold. And then people, that got people's attention. Then he ran a bigger story mm -hmm. in the paper and, uh, you know, explaining in depth and detail about the gold that was found on the American River and uh, ran off an extra 2,000 copies and sent those copies back east to be printed in papers and like New York City, Boston, Charleston, that sort of thing. And we do have uh, an image of one of the ads yes. that he put together, uh, which really sparked the interest of people in the East. Oh, yeah. And there were many types of advertisements like that, you know, and that was like the go west young man. 
Right. You know, these were different ships advertising that they're going to the gold fields of California and stuff like that. And so people just went out there. They did. And normally what they did was uh, they went by two ways. They went by ship and there were two routes that they took. One was down around the tip of South America mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the other route was going to the Isthmus of uh, Panama and they would stop there and then people would cross over the Isthmus and then take another ship from there to yeah. San Francisco. Right. And then there were those that traveled overland by wagon train. Right, right, right. Now, those ships, there are passenger lists. Yes. Uh, uh, the manifest, so you can also look for those these are uh, ships from the 1840s, 1850s yes, uh, uh, yes. to California, and they do exist. They do. So you might find an ancestor's name there who was your gold rush ancestor. Right. Okay. Now, I know this man, Samuel uh, Brandon, was a, uh, a Mormon yes. and a very good businessman. He had the distinction of being the first millionaire. millionaire. Although he did not ever, you know, lay his hand to a pick or shovel, uh -huh, uh -huh. he, um, you know, as soon as he, you know, before he printed his, uh, his article in his paper, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he started stocking up on, on shovels and picks and pans. Right, and, right. And then he sold them to all those that will be coming out mm -hmm. at a much inflated price. But he was the first man to make it to a million with gold. Right. Okay. Yes. Did many people become millionaires? There were quite a number that did, uh, but there were a lot of people that didn't. I mean, they went out there with a dream, and many of these people didn't even know how to mine for gold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, some of them got lucky. Uh, some of them, some of them didn't even make the trip there. Some of them died along the way because right. it was pretty harrowing to get there. Right now, the California gold rush just was not in California. It did extend up into Oregon, uh, yes, Washington it did. State, uh, Canada. Oh, yeah. You hear about the Yukon, yeah. uh, uh, British Columbia, and of course, Alaska. Alaska, yes. And I think people still go there. They do. To pan for gold. There are actual uh, commercial mines that are still in Alaska mm -hmm. and Canada. Right. Uh, as well as Nevada. You know, right. there was those states too. Uh, Nevada, uh, New Mexico, Arizona all had their rightful gold rush, you know, as well as Idaho and all those western states. Now, all of your panning for gold has been on the east, east coast. East coast. So yes. that's very nice to know. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, hang out with you. And yeah, we'll one day we'll have gold. to go. I'll take you. Right. We have a lot of gold on the set tonight, as you can see, but it's, it's not the real thing because we'd have millions of dollars yes. here, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's get to the genealogy part now. Okay. okay. We touched on it a, a, a bit with the Georgia uh, right. listing. Um, let's go looking for these golden ancestors of ours uh, by using home sources. Yeah. And what would these uh, contain, home well, sources? Well, home sources would be, you know, family Bibles, mm -hmm. um, you know, family, a family history, family legends. In the case of a gold rush ancestor. Yes. Is there money in the family, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, well, the family Bible, of course. Yes. Okay. And then you have used some primary sources. Right. And the first one I have listed here, and we have a, uh, uh, an image of it, is the 1850 Federal Population Census for California. Yes. And there are many miners listed on oh, here. Oh, yes. So many. that's a very good source to have. Yes, there's very... thousands, thousands of miners. Right, right. And I never knew this until my very learned guest, John Dorval, came along. I've been doing genealogy for so many years, but I never knew there was an 1852 California state census. Now, we have a, a state census right here in New Jersey, but California had one for 1852. Yes. Because there were so many people coming into California. Oh, yeah. Because of the gold rush. Right. And we have an example of it right here. And I'm going to have uh, uh, John Dorval read a few of these names, and it's in a printed source, uh, the California uh, 1852 State Census, if you can right. read a okay. few names there. Yeah, and it's all in alphabetical order, and we have, um, we have one last name here, Abbott, and first name, two initials, CM. It has their age, 21, this person was. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, the occupation of this person was a farmer, and it tells the birthplace. This one, uh, C.M. Abbott, is from Maine. Okay. And then we have uh, an Acosta here. A. Acosta was a laborer from Mexico. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, an Adams here, C.A., who was a merchant from Maine, who was also a resident of New York. And... Uh, so this is great genealogical oh, yeah. uh, uh, research here yes. because it names all of those uh, prospectors. Right. Okay. Now, there are printed sources yes. that the genealogist can use, and many books have been written about oh, the gold rush. Many. Right. Uh, the first one we have here is Recollections of a 49er. Is this a kind of biographical uh, uh yeah it's kind of like this person's own uh experience in the uh Great. the gold fields and there's many like that one you yeah know, a lot of people had written out like the california gold rush is probably one of the most well documented events in american history because so many people wrote you right know, they kept diaries and things of that nature so it's very possible to find your gold rush ancestor sure okay. yeah it had like in like in that particular one, there was a list of people in the company. Right. And you mentioned another book, The, uh, the Argonaut. Yes, what, what? The Argonauts of California. Now, this was a book that was written in the winter of 1887-88 by mm -hmm. a gold, a, a 49er. Yeah. Who was recollecting his experience. Mm -hmm. and, and it's pretty interesting to read, you know, what, what he went through and, and all that. But the second half of the book, it, it does have a list of, uh, of names of people that were there because there were like, you know, associations that were formed, like in a pioneer association of people that were in California. Right. As right. well as the ships that came there, the, the names of the people Excellent. on the ships. Excellent. As well as the, um, the wagon trains that came over land. Yes, yes. Those names are in there as well. So that's a good genealogy source. Very I think good you source. recommend that one. Yes, and, I highly recommend and that. And the book one. again is called The Argonauts of California. The, and you can find it yeah. on online. I mean yeah. it's uh you can find it in Google Books. You can also find it um in the uh, Internet Archive. Great. Very good. That's a good pardon the pun, it's a golden source. Oh golden source. Okay, Absolutely. a golden source. Um I mentioned that we had lots of gold on the uh, set tonight, which is fake, but I do have real gold right here that was prospected by you in yes, Georgia. This is Georgia gold. This is what real gold looks like, Georgia gold. Yes. Can I ask the worth of this? Uh, that is probably worth, oh, about $500 there. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Okay. And just that small bit. Yes. And then we have some right here. I think you purchased this somewhere. Yes, I uh, did purchase that. And, and this is from? California. That is actually um, load gold from a uh, hard rock mine. Right. Wonderful. And that other one is placer gold. I and see. it would have been placer gold that the 49ers were mining for in the rivers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's, uh, that's a certain terminology? Yeah, uh, terminology. Okay. Is this the most popular kind of gold? Uh, well, not necessarily, but... Um, that's what m most prospectors are looking for today because you're panning. That's what you're going to find in a river. Right, right. Okay. Um, I know that you've been doing this. I mentioned in my intro that John Dorval has been prospecting for gold since the age of four. And I know you're all saying, well, how did he do that? Um, he had a wonderful grandmother. And what was her name? Alice Cannon. And we have a photo of her, uh, uh, Grandma Alice. Yes. And she taught you. Yeah. All about panning for gold. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she would take you on these gold outings up in Maine yes. and New Hampshire and all uh, in the oh, Upper yeah, East. Yeah. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, my first trip was uh, with her in, mm -hmm. in 1969. I was four. She took me and my family to this uh, little town up in Maine called uh, <coughs> Byron. Byron, mm -hmm. Maine. Yeah. And there was an old minor prospector that lived on there. He was in his 80s at the time. Mm -hmm. and he'd already lived there for 40 years. Right, right. And so I got to meet him and, you know, saw how he panned. But we were panning gold with him. Uh, I didn't really do a whole lot of panning at the time because right. I was too little. But I, I dug for my grandmother and stuff like that. And was she successful? She was successful. And then later, as I got older, she took us on trips to uh, uh, New Hampshire. And mm -hmm. we 
we did some gold prospecting outings in the uh, White Mountains. One, and she loved it. Oh, she loved it. She loved it. Great. So yes. it's nice to know women have done this oh, yeah, as well. Yeah. And we're very happy and honored to have Grandma Alice's actual pan. Yeah. That's this the is one where, she this used. This is yep. the one that she used, which is now a family heirloom of the Dorval family. Oh, yeah. And uh, this is wonderful. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a real museum piece for you. Uh, I still use it, too. You still use yes. it. The old-fashioned uh, yep. panning for gold. Okay. Yep. And we also have another pan here. We have to credit the Chinese Americans for this. Yeah. Uh, they invented, they went panning for gold as well. Oh, they yeah, built they the were, railroads yeah, uh, they, to they California. They were at the gold rush. Right. And they invented this kind of a pan right here. Yeah. Uh, and what is this called? This uh, part, they call right? those a Chinese riffle. A Chinese riffle. Yeah, this is a modern plastic pan, but the original ones, when the Chinese came yeah. to California, they beat their walks into gold pans mm -hmm. and, and they put ridges on the side. And that helps separate the oh, gold yeah. or it, whatever? It helps keep the gold in the pan so you don't lose it. Great. Before we close, I know you hear of uh, panning for gold and you think, oh, it's an old uh, uh, hobby or, or, or a, a adventure of some kind. But my fine guest, John Dorval, is the secretary for the... Tri-State Gold Prospectors Association of America. All right, the Tri-State... Gold Prospectors Association of America. All right. And they're all over the country. Right. But the one that John uh, is with is in New York, Port Jervis, yes, New Port York. Port Jervis, New York. Unfortunately, we do not have one in New Jersey, but many New Jersey people join you on these sojourns. Yes. Okay. And uh, how often do you go? And uh, I'd like to go with you. Well, we meet... Uh, once a month, the yeah. first Saturday of every month, mm -hmm. and we try to take a trip every month when the weather is nice. Very good. And we go to New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, and we do gold prospecting. Any in New Jersey? Uh, I have personally done some uh, testing in New Jersey, and I have found some. Up along the Delaware? or yeah, up, yeah. up in the Kittatinny Mountains, Great. small streams up there, and uh, the gold is very, very fine. And these it's are like fun dust. outings, and anybody can join, men, women, and kids. Oh, go yeah, kids, too. yeah, we have kids and everything. Whole families can go Whole families, panning yeah. for gold. Well, that's wonderful. We all have to make extra money yeah, today yes. if, if we can find some gold. Um, also, before I close, I want to tell you, people out there that John Dorval has two wonderful distinctions, and I'll mention them to you. Number one, he is the only man I know who has served in both the Navy and the Army, and in that order, so we owe him a double thank you for his service. Oh, you're welcome. And he is my 30-year guest on Family Historian. Yes, my show is now 30 years old. And I'm so honored to have John Dorval celebrate that time with me. And it is a great honor for me. Great. John, thank you so much oh, for being on my show and you. talking about your gold rush ancestors. I hope you all learned something tonight. And as I say every week or every night, remember, we are all descendants of ancient civilizations. Genealogy is your key to the history of your family. And so until next time... This is Stephen Conti wishing you the very best of luck in your research and above all, happy ancestor hunting. Good night.